Hi, I'm Seamless, and today is Saturday, which means it's time for a new FL Basics tutorial. This one is going to be about Maximus. This is compression part two. So, Maximus. What is Maximus? Maximus is a multi bank compressor. It's a pretty straightforward way of saying it, but um, also has a master limiter involved. Uh, I mean, they're all compressor limiters kind of thing. And it's not in the sense that they're compressor limiter like the limiter is, in the sense that it can do both compre compressing and limiting. It's a compressor limiter in the sense that they can do both at once. That's what they can do. So I'll talk about what that means in a second, but let's talk about the multiband aspect. Why are there more than one band? What's the point of multiband compressing? Well, to demonstrate this, I made a drum loop in Superior Drummer. Let's say in this theoretical world that that mix is what I want. Not, not exactly the mastering, but the mix. That's the set, the sound that I want in my groove. I just want it louder. I want it as loud as it can get. But I don't want it to sound compressy. I don't want compression artifacts. I don't want that sort of feel. I just want it louder. So um, if I did this in a normal way, where I compressed it to the point where the dynamics are kind of in line. See, so if, you, if, you, if you watch it, watch the uh, visual here. We can see that the primary culprit is that the snare transients are really high. So the first, the obvious thing we can do is bring it up to the point where the uh, the kicks are at zero dB and the snares are getting compressed. So now that I've done that, we have our problem. Like it's, it starts, it sounds compressed. There's a little bit of tail going on. And I can I can get rid of that by doing the release on, the, on this sort of stuff, but that still sounds weird. It's still just it's just odd. And it's also damaging other things like the compression on the master on one a single band compressor it brings down the transient total but things like you know the symbols and the high frequency content that aren't the snare are going to be affected by that as well this is usually what happens with kicks and stuff but for this particular kit the kick is not very loud so whatever um our problem is a snare today how do we deal with this well um we go and we basically compress it independent in band independently and what are the bands? Well, if we go to the bands tab, we can see the basically the band settings, where the low is and high is and all that sort of stuff. So uh, how we can fine tune this is if we turn on this button, this gives us a spectrogram view of the audio. And I can see that the snare transient hits right about here. So I want to bring this down to kind of basically be only the base of the sub. Basically the kick drum, basically. I want to bring this down because that's all a little bit shimmer. Kind of basically here is it's more or less the taste kind of deal so now this is basically separated a compression into three primary groups in the whole drum kit we have kick snare and hats and stuff if there were toms or whatever they would fit in here too but they're not any toms today because i don't feel like it now um if you look at the the low the transient on the low you pretty much see that only the kicks show up if you go to the snare or the mid rather, we see that the snare is pretty much the most prominent thing happening. And then the highs, we see the high, the snare is also pretty much loud, pretty loud there. So we're going to compress the, the the dynamics in the bands individually. So how do we do this? Because if you look around, we see that we see an attack and release in the head you know, knobs. We saw, we also have pre and gain, pre post, pre and post gain, but there's no ratio or threshold or knee knobs, right? Well, because when we see these graphs, usually in other compressors, we see those knobs that accompany it, and we move the knobs, the graph changes. The graph is basically the representation of what the knobs are doing. However, uh, Able Design decided to cut the middleman out, and you just affect the graph. You just grab points and make graphs kind of thing. So this is actually really kind of awesome, because this enables us to do much more awesome things than just, you know, ratio changes. Like, for example, this right here, would be a threshold at zero and a ratio of two to or one to two, two to, two to one. Yes, two to one, which means that it would need to be twice as loud for it to come out with one equivalent audio, basically half as much. You can kind of see that happening. Like this would be like if I, if I set the ratio pretty, like down here somewhere. So now, you see when when the audio is playing, like kind of how in the mixer, when the peak kind of stays at where the peak is for a second and then it eventually goes away. That's what's going on here as well with the, uh, the, the, the lighter sides of the peaking inside the graph. So I can see the peak happens here, but then I can see these lower peaks happen pretty much around here. 
So that means I can set the basically the threshold to be here. Just, this is basically just arbitrary terms now. I just do what I want, honestly. And then I can turn this down to determine how much I want to crush the transients that are above that threshold. And then of course you can do this stuff, which there's no analog. I mean, this is basically knee, you know, knee for your for your ratio kind of thing. That's what this is, basically kneeing. But then you can also do crazy town like this, double knee, or even crazier town. I don't even know what the hell that would be called. And we'll get into what that does in a bit. But for now, let's do you know, normal stuff. So I'm just gonna crush my transient. So now the loudness part of the snare, which is the base, the fundamental tone is being brought down a little bit, but as you can hear, it doesn't really mess with the snappiness because the snappiness is coming from the high frequencies and that's being unaltered by this entire thing, which is the point of isolating part of the spectrum to be compressed by itself. I do want a little bit of that going on over here too. Note that I'm bringing down the release curve to uh, take away some of that sort of expandy kind of sort of thing that happens when you compress stuff. So now let's go back to the master and see what's happened. We can see that the transients are pretty much in line. The tallest part of the dynamic range is brought in. So now I can turn it up. So now we have a transparent, transparently compressed beat. That sounds almost entirely like it did originally and is also now louder, it's a lot louder, but it doesn't sound like it's been compressed, does it? It sounds, it just sounds like it's louder, like it's been mixed really well, That's pretty much what that sounds like. And so that's the benefit of multi-bay compression. It's pretty much what it was designed for. It was designed for more transparent, mix, more transparent compression on mixes and stuff. Now let's talk about not transparent options, right? So when I use Maximus, when you, if you know anything about me, if you see my projects kind of thing, you know that I do not give a rat's ass about transparency. So let's talk about some of our options that are not transparent. I can just go in here and go to reset, yeah. So normally what I do is I brick wall everything. So I basically ensure that all peaks at all parts of the spectrum are at zero dB all the time. And there's a number of ways to do this, lots of really cool ways that you can accomplish it. Um, a fun way is to just grab this point, bring it over. This is referred to as expansion, where this would have basically been, I set I set the, um, like right here would be if I set the ratio down to zero and I set or the threshold down to zero and I set the ratio to uh, one to two, which means that for every one input of audio, double comes out. You can do that with a limiter but you can't do that with specific parts of the spectrum, which is what I'm doing here. And I can also go crazy town. Like. This pretty much ensures that if there is audio, it's at zero dB forever. Damn. I could also do things like, you know, this is a, this is a straight line. If I want to, I can make a curve like this, or I can make a curve like this. Is like some kind of radical transient shape. Ain't that outlandish. But I do just want to make a straight line and make it loud. Yeah. So let's go with the bits. So I want to bring back the double curve so I'm going to do this. I really like that sort of expandy, like whoosh sound that happens when you over compress drums. I do it a lot in like breaks and stuff. I just love it. So now we're gonna increase the highs a bit. The low enough values of the attack ahead and release, which I discussed what they do and the limiter, they're pretty much the same here. 
in the Liber tutorial, which is the past tutorial, part one of compression, this being part two, um, the closer the zero is get, the more this curve basically becomes a wave shaper. And so this is, you can think of this as basically a multi-band compressor limiter wave shaper, which man, doesn't that just give you some possibilities? So uh, now let's go to the master. So we had it super loud in the first place. But um, we can, you know, crush stuff and mess around with the release curves and a lot of new stuff. But uh, we also have options, even wacky ones. So if you saw that, that was actually bringing it above zero dB for a second. Now, one thing I do a lot in using Maximus is I just do that. And what this does is this means that there's actually not any compression happening at all. And so what keeps it below zero dB? Well, that's the soft saturation, which we talked about briefly in limiter, except that the abilities of the soft saturator are pretty much expanded in how Maximus works. In Maximus, uh, we have basically the threshold, which is the two different types of soft saturation, which are the one the one that has a ceiling and then th the threshold goes all the way to the bottom, and then one that has a threshold that emanates from the ceiling. And then as you saw, I can also change where the ceiling is, which is not something you could have done in limiter. But I usually keep the ceiling where it is and I make the threshold small so that it kills everything at zero dB. And of course it distorts, because that's what it is, it's distortion. I can bring it back. So like I said about how the wave shaping works, where if these were low enough values, what these ba values basically do is determine how fast the compression, which is the volume going up and down of the, of the band, in this case the master, how fast that follows the program that this sets. And the program is basically you see you see how the tran you see how the transients actually act when um, when it, their input you see the peaks like that that's a peak that's the peak and then you see this thing which is the actual incoming audio and then that adheres to this position. So like if it, like this would say right now, if the audio came in at minus six dB, it's actually gonna get brought up to zero dB and then as it falls down, it's not gonna fall down until it gets down right over here, but it'll fall down really fast. So that kind of thing, except that how well it adheres to that is determined by the release curve, or release the delay, and then also like the curve settings, which I covered in Luminar, and this is pretty much the same thing. And then also the head. Uh, we have a different kind of um, uh, release two here. There's, there's a second there's a secondary uh, release and it has a different curve type as you see here and this uh, curve is affected by this book here which also affects the attack so I rarely use this but it is a cool thing sometimes when you mess with it and if you were if you were um, on my on my live stream two weeks ago you'll remember this from Muzzy looking at it and saying that looks like a snail and it does. So there's, there's the guy, and there's the shell, and then there's the lies. That's a snail. <sighs> so other things we have here include the uh, low, mid, and high mix, which is how, mu how much of the compression that's happening in the, in the low band, in the bands, actually comes through. So this is kind of like built-in parallel compressing, compression, which is nice. Um, the bands can be set, position can be set here, like we said, and then over here, it, this determines the filter's sharpness, either 12 dB or 24 dB. And you can independently set them for uh, this position and this position because they're all deal. And a low cut brings up the floor of the mix kind of thing, which is handy. Um, these are all visual options for seeing things. It can get kind of hectic. See, this is actually showing all of the bands at once. You can see lots of lots of options. So it showed band input peaks. <laughs> Lots of fun stuff. Uh, here's just some options. We have spirits, like oversampling. There is a uh, linear phase filters as opposed to the, the minimum phase filters, which are by default. And also master mid mode, which is a mid side kind of deal. Which I don't really have any idea what that does because I've never looked into what mid side, uh, mid side compression even is or mid side EQ for that matter. So I'm not going to talk about it because I would not know what I'm saying. Um, this button, this guy, this knob is important. So what this is, this is a stereo separation, right? And you have this, you have one of these for every band. Now this is cool for like a, a standard setup would be that I do is you, you mono the lows and then you put some stereo separation in the mids and highs. Monoing the lows is good because 
if you want your bass to be dead center all the time, the same coming out of the sand on each speaker to ensure that there is no phasing issues on your sub. That's super important for a good mix. And mid and high, you just want use like you know bigger stereo imaging. That sounds good. Be like that. And you can also solo stuff if you want to. Get a good look at what stuff sounds like. Yeah. Uh, you know, look ahead delay for all three of the low bit and high. Uh, ahead, which is wind windowing. This is a look ahead window. Attack time, which on the master actually is attack time. And in the, in the bands is actually, uh, it delays when the compression starts versus in the master, it uh, actually delays the audio. Which you can see hilariously here happening. Then we have double snare, snail. Double snail. Mm, you have the option to, uh, they're all on by default, but you can have them on, but then the compressor is off. You can mute them, mute the bands, you can, and then you can just turn the bands off entirely, which is basically like muting them kind of thing. Yeah, so. Uh, I believe I've covered everything important. I showed you how to do a transparent kind of mix, which is what multiband compression as a, as a thing was created for. And I also showed you how you could use Maximus to do crazy creative non-transparent things because editing the graph is the game changer. That's the thing that makes us awesome and it's something that not, it's not really present in other compressors kind of thing. So, and then also I covered how if you turn all of these down, you basically get a wave shaper. Like it's literally identical to if I went in here and I pulled up the actual wave shaper. Where is it? So now everything that you could do in the wave shaper, you can do a Maximus, except now you have the option to have attack release and, to, and ahead kind of stuff, and you can do it multiband. How's that? So Maximus is a multiband compressor limiter wave shaper. That is that is a heavy that is a heavy load. All right. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know. And as usual, have a nice day. Happy compressing.